Aloha and welcome to Knitted Paradise, where the needles are clicking and the yarn is squishy. My name is Lucia and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Pearl of the Pacific and you can find the podcast as Knitted Paradise Podcast on YouTube or in the Ravelry groups or on my website which is pearlofthepacific.info and you can find show notes in all of those places as well. And please come find me on Instagram. I'd love to either follow you or you follow me. And please engage with me. I've been really enjoying um, chatting with people on Instagram. Um, I enjoy when you comment on my photos and we can talk about things. And it's another way that I connect with people. So, I mean, it is a form of social media. So I tr I'm trying to be more social and comment on more things. So um, that's been really fun. All right, well, welcome to episode 70. Today is Sunday morning, it's April 12th, and it's sunny and warm and glorious outside, and yay, the sun is back. I sat outside yesterday with um, a really good friend, and we were having tea, and it was just so nice to sit in the sun and just feel its warmth rather than sit inside and feel like not really fake warmth, but like manufactured warmth, you know, like it's a different kind of warmth than you get from the sun. So that was really nice. And also my skin is like pasty white. I feel like Casper, it's like translucent. And I know that's pretty normal for people who grew up in the Midwest, but growing up in Hawaii, I mean, I'm white. I'm not going to deny that. <laughs> I'm, I'm a ginger and, you know, gingers are definitely pretty pasty, but... I'm used to having like some sort of base color just because you're out in the sun more in Hawaii, just in normal life. And, uh, and so it's really odd to just be like translucent. Um, <laughs> it's really I have the window open over there and um, the window is right by the front of the building and there's like an awning. It's not really an awning, it's like a covering for the vestibule where you come in. And it's um, it's kind of hollow, and so water collects in there, and so it's the perfect bird bath, i.e. the perfect cat television. So the cat gets very excited when the birds come take a bath. So that's what's happening right now. It's really funny. Anyway, a little after that little distraction. Uh, below the con shell, we have Yarn Con coming up next weekend in Chicago, and I plan on being there on Saturday. I have a big meeting on Sunday, so I can't go both days, but I will be there on Saturday unless, you know, something happens. Uh, so please let me know if you're going. I'd love to meet up with you and hang out or, um, you know, just wander around, knit with you, talk with you. So please let me know if you're going, and I will see you there. And uh, the yarn, I mean, not the yarn, the, um, the gnome knit along is still going on. I realize I have a week to knit a tiny little gnome. Luckily, it's a tiny little gnome, and I can do it. <laughs> I can knit at least one, right? And I might keep one. So I'll have to get on that. I found um, on the website, the Mochi Mochi website, um, which I don't know if I've linked in the show notes, but there is a thread on the Ravelry group called Gnome Cal or something. And um, there are, on their website, there's a bunch of free patterns for gnomes, that are knitted and there's also some that are crochet so take a look at those and uh, yeah Ta -da. all right next I wanted to share that I was um, I was asked by Stephanie um, who hosts the um, handmade by Stephanie blog if I would be a guest poster on her blog she was doing or she is doing a take five series where people, um, she asked guests to make a list of five things, either, you know, five whatever. And so she had a list of, you know, options. You could also make your own. But I picked one that was the top five tools. And I couldn't make up my mind whether I wanted to do like top five notions, because those are tools, you know, they're little tools, or top five big tools, like, yarn swifts and stuff like that. So I did a list of both. So you get a double whammy. And that, I forgot to talk about that last week on the podcast, but that went live on Monday. 
if you want to check it out, her blog is handmadebystephanie.blogspot.com, and I will put a link in the show notes to my post, um, although it's, it's one of the more recent ones. So take a look at that. It's kind of fun. And uh, yeah, I won't give away what it is, but I had fun talking about the notions that I keep in my notions kit, which I know I've talked about on previous podcasts, and uh, I may do another episode about that coming up. And then top five knitting tools that um, I said that take me that took me from a casual knitter to a serious knitter. There are things that, you know, you can knit without them, but if you're going to be like a seriously obsessed yarn snob kind of knitter, these are tools that most of us have, I think. And um, so that's the way I phrased it. <laughs> so go check that out. It's really fun. All right. On the island, I have absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I know it's weird, right? Everything I worked on this week set sail. <laughs> I mean, I do have things that are previously on the needles, but they're in the hammock and I didn't work on them this week, but everything I worked on this week set sail. Really odd, but that's the way it worked out. So we're just going to skip on past the on the island section and go to the set sail section. Do you want to come say hi? Pan, come here. Come here. Pan wants to say hi. He's been trying to no, no, you don't want to come say hi. He's trying to jump on the stool of things I have over here and on the table. And You just want to be close, but not in the podcast. Is that it? Now he's sitting right behind the computer. Anyway, maybe he'll make an appearance later. Pan's my cat. That's my pantaloon. All right, so let's start. What do I have? Okay, so I think I showed these last week. These are some socks I made a while ago. They are out of Highland Handmaid's Mountain Maple Sock in Divi, which was, I think, a one, one-time colorway. She did a bunch of, like, tonals with two different colors. And now you're jumping on the pile. Do you want to just come say hi? Come here. Oh. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> You want to come say hi at least? You look at the camera, show your pretty face. Yes, he's a good boy. So this is Pantalaman. Pan short. Are you done? Okay. Bye -bye. He'll sit in your lap if he wants to, but not if you want him to. <laughs> anyway, back to the socks. So these are socks I knit a while ago, and Heather had done some like two tone colors and um, named them a bunch of different words for two. So Divi is a word for two. I don't know where it comes from, I'm sorry. But they are bright yellow. And my I knit them for my previous boss, and she had worn this huge hole in the heel. So there we go. So I fixed that, and she had worn another hole in toward the front, which I fixed. And then she had worn this part thin. You can see I... Um, reinforced it. I'll show it from the inside. You can see it better. So that's how I reinforced it. And um, the second sock, she hadn't worn them through yet. So I also did a reinforcement there. Sorry, this one's really bright. So it's, there we go. So I did a reinforcement there and one on the toe area as well. You can kind of see it from the outside. And then I put some fresh pom-poms on them. These are just store-bought crafty pom-poms. And when I bought them, I bought a whole packet, which is like, I don't know, 100 or something. So hers were looking a little smushed. So I put some fresh ones on there yesterday. And I washed and blocked them. So they smell nice now. I mean, I think she gave them to me washed, but wanted to make them look very nice and give them back to her. So she's so excited. She's like, I miss my socks. Because I told her last week, I was like, they're almost done. But I want to replace the pom-poms and then give them back to you. So she's like, yay, I miss my socks. So that'll be nice to give those back to her. 
Um, the other darning I did, I did find my darning egg. I think I talked about that last week. I couldn't find it. It was in the back shoved somewhere under a bunch of things that I didn't think it would be with. So I was able to find that and that made darning those socks much easier. I fixed a hole, I had a tiny, tiny little hole in the toe of one of my socks and I fixed that. If I wore it on my left foot, it was right on the big toe, which was a problem. I think it was probably, I just caught it on something. So I just have been wearing it on the other foot for a long time so that the hole is by the pinky, which doesn't matter as much. It's not like rubbing. I finally fixed that. I didn't bring it out to show because it's not that exciting. And then the friend I was having tea with yesterday, he had worn a hole in one of his socks, just a tiny, tiny little one, just like mine. So while we were having tea, I just got out my darning needle. I had some of the yarn left over and just stitched it up. It's like, whoa, that's magic. It really is not that hard. <laughs> it's like, I'll let you think that it's magic. So I fixed those two little holes. And the other thing that I fixed was my Rivendell socks. I know I had talked about these when I finished them. Here they are. Ta-da! Um, this part up at the top, I didn't rip them all out. Um, what I did was this part up the top, this nice cable bit, was really tight. And um, I know when I finished them, I had said to you guys, if you plan on knitting them, go up a needle size. And so that's what I did. I ripped them back past, just past the, the nice cable bits. It's not really a cable, it's one by one crossover, so I did it without a cable needle. And um, the rest of the sock I had knit on size one. So I went up to a size two, and I did the cable bit, and then I did this part a little longer. I think before it cuts off, like right here. And also I think there was supposed to be another cross somewhere that I didn't do. Um, so I did those about an, an inch maybe above where I think they called for, which I like. And I want I wanted them a little taller. I did do them a little taller here too before doing the cable bit, and then do a little because I wanted just a little more height. I like them. I have some some short boots, and I like it when my socks stick out over my short boots. Um, just if I'm wearing them like the pant, if I wore my like bootcut pants over the boots, I don't want the boots like the top of the zipper especially to rub against my legs. So I like the socks to be above it. Or if I'm wearing like skinny jeans inside the socks that I like my socks to show. So I'm very excited that those are done and they are much more stretchy now that I've gone up that needle size. And you really can't tell that much. Um, also there was on one of them like down here on one of these nice twisted stitch um, columns here there was a random pearl stitch and it was driving me nuts. And most people aren't going to see that, and it's in my shoe anyway. But I did drop down and fix that, so that made me feel better. And I think that was... I remember when I showed these socks originally on the podcast, that's when I noticed it, <laughs> and I was really bummed. <laughs> but I was like, I'm not ripping back all that cable fit. But since I'd already ripped back all the cable fits, it was really easy to just drop down and fix it. So I think that was the only pearl bump I noticed. Maybe. I don't know. There's another one. I didn't see it, so too late now. So those are done. Um, these are out of Knit Picks Stroll in like the Pearl Essence colorway, I think, which I think is perfect for this. There you can see the color better on the bottom there. It's perfect for this pattern because it reminds me of marble. So they are super tall. I just kind of put them down here so that I could stretch that part out because that's what needed stretching. So. Those are done. I'm very happy to get those out of the fix-it bag. Um, and these two, and my other socks too. Um, so I felt good to finally be fixing things. I'm now on a roll here. I fixed my husband's sweater first, and then I fixed all these socks, and I'm like, all right, what's next? So I'm excited to do some more fixing and finishing up of some old works in progress. That was kind of my goal this week. I didn't, I've been really wanting to cast on like everything. It's like, no, I'm gonna finish what I have and um, you know, fix some things and kind of clear things out and uh, then I can start on some things. So I've been planning, I've been doing a lot of planning this week. All right, the other thing I finished was my Static Sing socks. 
These are out of Mad Color Fiber Arts Duali Base in the Doomsday Machine colorway. That is the very dated ugliness that I got from my, the Star Trek club. And it got all swirly on the top when I did the cuff. And the white is Cascade Heritage in white. And I did my um, bottom of the heel gusset, short row heel, and my gusset decreases there. And they turned out quite well. I'm really happy with them. Ta da! So, as you notice here, I did do two white stripes in a row, and I don't care. Like, normally, I'm really anal about those kind of things, but it really doesn't bother me that much. It's kind of odd. I'm like, okay. Um, the one modification, ooh, I haven't chopped my ends yet, I did do was on the back of the foot, um, I started, I think, maybe here, and I increased um, in the pearl sections. So it's normally, it's a one and then two, so I increased one in these pearl um, so I increased here on one row, and then I just did two rounds plain, and then increased in here one, and then did two rounds plain, and then, so by the end I had, you know, kind of this slow increase up to the top. And it just creates a little more room. I have a big cast dancer in the territory. So those are done. I'm very happy with those, and they are nice and tall. I don't know how tall they stretched out, but the leg is the longer than the foot, actually. I think I did the leg, like, from here. Well, you can't see that. <laughs> like, to here. And then I did the cuff. So, if you fold the sock over. Well, here, let me just take one off and fold it over. And now that it's blocked, it might be a little different. Okay, so if you fold it over like right at the short rows, there you can see. So they are, the leg is longer than the foot, which is what I like. I like tall socks. So those are done. I'm very excited about those multicolor loveliness. They look really cool from far away. They look really cool close up too, but they look really cool from far away. So those are done. And... Yeah, I finished these yesterday. I was These were the only thing that I was questioning might still be on the needles when I recorded today, but I finished them yesterday, so ta-da! All right, that is it for set sale. I have some things from the mainland. I got some yarn from Highland Handmaids, who is Heather from Maine, who does the Fiberista Files podcast, which is excellent. That's one of my favorites that I've been watching for a very long time. Um, one of the originals that I watched. And she had this one-of-a-kind colorway called Egg Hunt in her red maple sock, which is 50% superwash merino, 50% tencel. And I've knit with that. Um, I have a shawl out of this base. And it's, oh, I love it. That's another one in my fixed pile. I was so excited to finish it and wear it that I made it really small. And I had a ton of yarn left over, so I need to fix that. But this was the color. Oh, right here. There we go. There's too much sun closer to the camera. So this is it. In all its Easter egg hunt glory, pastel -y, baby colored wonderfulness. So if you remember my baby color rant a couple episodes ago, these are totally my colors. I look in baby colors. What can I say? So I'm really excited about this. I no, it probably will become a shawl. I'm not sure, just because the tencel is, is very drapey. It's a plant fiber, if you didn't know. Uh, it's made from a tree, some sort it's a tree fiber, and it's very drapey. <laughs> if you couldn't tell, like I can't get the skein to stand up, maybe. Oh, oh, very, oh, no. So the other shawl I have out of this is very drapey. So I have no idea what shawl this is going to become, but I saw this and I was like, mm, I think I need that. So 
I'm very excited that it stayed in the shop long enough for me to get it. Ta -da. So that is new this week. And one thing I really like when Heather sends me packages, I think she does this when she sends everyone's packages, but she's in the, on the invoice, she writes a handwritten note, which I think is really, really awesome. She may write the same thing to everyone. I don't really care. I just like that she took the time to write me a handwritten note. It makes me feel important as a customer. So thank you, Heather. I don't think you watch, but thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, it just, it's a nice, it's a nice touch to do that. You know, I know it probably takes a lot of time to do that for everyone, but um, it just makes me feel like, oh, she took the time to write this handwritten note to package my thing and to send it off. So thank you. Uh, oh, the other thing I got after I lost my train of thought, I got the last shipment from my Mad Color Fiber Arts Mad Geek Tour, and it came with a skein of yarn and a bag from Stitched by Jessalou, which I was super excited about because I don't have a bag from Stitched by Jessalou. So are you ready? Are you ready? If you're in the club and don't want to see, look away. But this is awesome. Here, I'll show you this side. I mean, both sides are pretty cool. So the theme was Star Trek. Dun, dun, dun. They're all characters from Star Trek. You have, ooh, I don't, there's Janeway, and there's Riker, and let's see who else we have. That's Uhura, and that's Tuvok. We've got a Ferengi here. I'm not exactly sure which one it is. Um, let's see, oh, there's Picard. There's the, oop, backwards, there's the board queen. There's seven of nine. Let's see, who else do we have in here? Oh, there's Spock. I think that's probably Kirk. And, what's her face? I can't remember the actor's name. Marina? Spock, what's her name? Oh. What is her name? Deanna, Deanna Troy, Counselor Troy. And Jordy. Another Borg. That might be Picard as the Lacutus of Borg. Or, yeah, Lacutus. Um, there's probably some other people in here. There's some from... Sorry to get cat hair on it. There's some from DS9, which I have not watched yet. But it's really fun. And you want to see the inside? Okay, let me take the yarn out. Space! Oh, here. It's not attached. Aha! It's space! It's so fun on the inside. You look at it. Yeah. It feels like it's bigger on the inside. It really does. Which I know is not a Star Trek thing. It's a Doctor Who thing. But it does feel like it's bigger on the inside. And... So, this is my first Touched by Jessalou bag. Of course, it comes with the little, I forget what it is, because it's not a bumblebee, it's a, a dragonfly, dragonfly, little zipper pole, which is really cool. So, ta-da, and are you ready for this yarn? Are you ready for this yarn? Yeah, I almost died. This is called To Boldly Go. And get it all arranged here. Ta da! It is the four command colors, or the four colors of their uniforms. I put the black one on this side. It's mini skeins, but it equals like one full skein. This is also in her duolly base. So, those are the four uniform colors, and they are spot on. We've been watching the original series, and these are it. Like, Exactly. It's kind of amazing. I don't know how she did it, but it's very, very cool. So I have no idea what this is going to be, but it is very fun <laughs> and very exciting. So those have been living in my bag along with my tricorder stitched kit. Um, 
all my stuff in there. I actually cleaned it out the other day. It was getting a little full of randomness. So and I have a Star Trek bag, Star Trek yarn, and Star Trek Notions kit. I'm pretty excited. So that is it. Oh, from the mainland. From from the island. I got some things from the island. My parents sent me a package and they sent me some oh, I didn't bring the thing that I wanted to show you. I brought some things and not the other things, so but they sent me some white honey, which I wanted to show you. It's kind of like white honey. It's raw white honey. And it's see you know, the sun. It's thick. It's really thick. Like it's, it's really thick. Mm. And it's amazing. Oh, it tastes totally different than normal honey. Mm. And this is made I think, I don't know if this one is made, but they, there's a farm like 20 minutes from my parents' house that does this type of honey. And I've never seen it anywhere else but Hawaii. So I got that and they sent me some Mac nuts. Some like real Mac nuts. So I've been really excited about those. This is what I don't know, you, you've probably seen a Mac Nut before, but if you haven't seen a Mac Nut, this is what they are. Um, these are really good, too. Funny story about me. Uh, I don't know if I talked about this before, but on the playground at my elementary school, um, there there's Mac Nut trees. And during recess, one of the activities that I would do is crack mac nuts and it's really funny because they come in like a soft outer shell that you have to peel off it's kind of like peeling the skin of an orange except underneath is this really hard brown shell and you have to smash it and you have to be very precise about this because you if you so you'd find like the perfect rock to put your mac nut on and then the perfect rock to then smash the mac nut and you don't want to smash it you just want to crack it enough you can then get the brown shell off and not have totally obliterated the mac nut inside. It's a very delicate process. So the fact that they get these mac nuts like perfectly out of the brown shell, I can really appreciate that because I spent a lot of time as a child trying to do such things. So that reminds me of my childhood, which is really nice. And the other thing that reminds me of, the of my childhood is the other thing that they sent, which is kind of the reason for sending the package, which is the thing I forgot. So I'm going to go get that and be right back. Okay, I got it. I thought about this and then conveniently put them away, which is what you're supposed to do after you're done using them, right? And then forgot to put them in my pile. So these are some placemats that my grandmother knit. And they are very simple, grainy, um, grainy square, grainy rectangle, and they're done corner to corner. So you cast on like this corner per se, and then you increase until you get to that corner, and then you knit straight for a while, and then you decrease to get to the other corner. Ta-da! So, and these are knit out of, I think, like, Red Heart of class, cra Classic or something like that. They're pretty acrylic-y, which is perfect when you have kids like me, and they make messes, and you can wash these a million times. I don't even know how many times my parents have washed these, and they still come out like this. <laughs> and we grew up using blue ones. These were more of, like, we had red ones that we'd bring out for Christmas, and then we had these white ones that were just kind of random. And so... My mom sent me the two white ones that she had, and I've been using those, which is fun. I was like, oh, I knit some, so I'll knit some for myself, but now we've got two, ta-da, one for each of us, which is kind of fun. And I mean, they're not the highest quality things, but you know, they remind me of my childhood, so that was kind of fun. It's interesting now that I'm a knitter, I'm noticing all these interesting 
things about them. Like, there's this huge knot here that I don't think I ever noticed as a child, you know. And on this side, it's not as noticeable. But it's just kind of funny the things you notice when you're a knitter. I'm like, oh, how is this done? No, and I tried to figure it out when I was a brand new knitter, and I couldn't figure it out. Like, now I look at it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I know exactly what's going on. <laughs> but it was really funny. So these are my little knitted gift from the island that I wanted to share with you all. All right. Put those over here. Okay. You have to find the place with minimal cat hair. Cat hair is everywhere. It's okay. I love the cat. Comes comes with territory, right? All right. So let's do some flora and fauna. I'm going to talk about project bags, as you've guessed from the episode title. I forgot to mention, mention this in the beginning, but I'm going to talk about some project bags. I had someone ask me about some of my project bags, and I thought I would give you all kind of a not show and tell, but a little bit of show and tell about my project bags. Um, they are actually, I'll, I'll give this hint away, they are in my list of knitting tools for my, my guest post on um, Stephanie's blog. And my reasoning for that is, I mean, some people think of them as a fun thing, and they are a fun thing, but they're also an important tool. They keep all of your yarn and your notions and your needles all together and protected. Um, they're easy to take with you. Um, they're easy to just kind of throw in a basket and keep your project separated so they don't get tangled. Um, they're just very useful things. And there are all sorts of different kinds of project bags. I've tried a bunch of different ones, and there are some that I found that I, per I tend toward more than others. I'm not saying that any project bag is bad. I'm just saying that I have a personal preference for certain types because I feel like they work for me more than others. Just something I've learned over time trying a bunch of different project bags. So, um... Let's get started. All right, so one of the project bags I've had for a long time is this box bag. And there's actually a project in it. It has been resting in the hammock for a very long time. Ooh, it even has a pattern in there. I mean, I printed out this pattern like a bazillion times because I kept losing it, and now I have like four copies of it everywhere. And this is by Carning, Carning Arm Bags. There it is. And what I love about this one is there's a pocket inside. There's something in the pocket right now, but I love having that pocket. And I can put stitch markers in there or other things in here. I mean, it's not a zippered pocket, but that's okay. It's just the fact that it's separated from my project. And I really enjoy that. Box, ba box bags, I kind of have not a love-hate relationship, but like I like them, but they're not my favorite. They are very easy to throw in my purse because they're nice and contained and I just, just plop them in. And um, I have a large purse mainly for the purpose of putting knitting into it. And so this width fits quite nicely into my purse and keeps things contained. And they're perfect for sock projects. And I also like that it has a hanging thing, which might have gotten very dirty for some reason. I think I hung it on something, um, like one of my carabiners or something. It's also nice, I can clip it to something. So this is a very early bag that I got um, as a gift, actually, but it came from Etsy. And, oh, I forgot to say, I've started a, a post, not a post, but a, a list of project bags in my, on my stash page in Ravelry. Um, you'll notice you see, like, all my stash, and then project bags. It's one of the newer ones, just because I just started adding it. And I started, I take this because of this, I started doing it. And I just, I've been taking pictures of all my project bags. They're not all in there yet. Um, and I listed where they came from, too. So if you want to go take a look at that, that's also an option. And I tried to list them in order of pictured. So if you count the pictures and count how many down, that's why some of them are listed, like, the same bag maker twice in a row because there's two pictures of two different project bags that I got. And I tried to do them like the earliest that I got to like, 
Like this one I think is on the bottom right now, and the Star Trek one is on the top. So the newest ones are at the top, just because it's easier that way. So this is actually my only box bag, oddly enough. I have nothing against box bags, I just don't tend toward them. You'll kind of see what I tend toward now. So that's that one. The other kind of box bag I have is actually a makeup bag. Is this is by Clinique and it's a lot narrower and it's also perfect for socks right now I have a bunch of get that to go down tiny little scraps in here for making small little things for this um, as you can see this has not changed for a while so this has not gotten any attention in a while but that's there it also fits um, one of these little kits perfectly so I have a bunch of these. These are by Slipstitch Studios and they are needle nooks. So you can clip your needles in there to keep your project on your bag. But they also, this is my favorite part about them, have a zippered pocket where you can keep your notions. I have all of my size one DPNs in here. I've got three different kinds in there. And stitch markers and foldable scissors and a bunch of other stuff. So that makes it really handy so I can keep everything together. So that's another early bag that I had. Um, maybe I got for free for buying something else. I don't remember what else. Um, I'm just going to go in order that they are in this pile. This is one that someone asked me about. This is from Yarn Pop and this is their um, yarnpop.com and this one I got where did I get this one? I don't remember. Anyway, but it's got two um, rivets there that you can pull yarn out. And it has, when you zip it closed, there's, this one doesn't have as big of a hole as the other one, but you can put your, like, because your project comes out here, so it's on the outside of the project bag, which is kind of odd. Um, but often what I would do is put this in my purse, and it would just kind of sit in there or like this, the yarn would come out and then I just plop the socks like on top of it in my purse so they're just on top so I can just pick them up and then a few rows pop them back in. Um, but you can stick the project bag or the project in here, zip it and put the yarn like right here and there's enough room there that it's not going to damage it. And this is their double bag. I don't remember which one it was but I have two of their bags. I have this one and I have this one, which is their gadgety bag. And it's got a rivet on both sides. And one of them is in a pocket. Like this one is just really it's hard to show. <laughs> but there's a pocket in here, a zippered pocket. So one of the rivets is in the pocket and the other one is not in the pocket. Anyway. One of them's not in the pocket, one of them's in the pocket. And it's made so you can put like gadgets in here, like your phone or your MP3 player or whatever, and then have your headphones come out one side and your project come out the other. It keeps them separate. Um, so that's also really nice. I like having that bag or that pocket in there. I have some stitch markers, some scissors, and um, a tape measure in here. So. These are my two yarn pot bags. This one I got at Stitches Midwest this past year, and this one I got at Vogue Knitting Live the first time I went. So not this past year, but the year before. So those are my two yarn pot bags. Um, running out of places to put things. All right. One of another bags that I've had for a while is this one. I think I've shown this before. It's very large. It's got all my things in it for my leftover cowl that's going to be cast on very soon. I just haven't gotten to it yet. And this is by Erin Lane. I love the polka dots. It is gigantic. This is one of the few drawstring bags that I have. But it stays closed very well. I mean, like, I'm pulling on it pretty hard. And it's not coming undone. Like, I have to really pull on it for it to come undone. So that's really nice. Ta-da! Makes a nice sound when you close it. That one I've had for a while. 
Oh, let me go down there. Um, another drawstring one that I have that, um, this one's made by a local bag maker. She sells the bags at a yarn store that's up north from me called Mia Bella, and they are going to be at Yarn Con. Um, I did see that. And so you can get these at, either at the store or when they vend at events. They were at Vogue Knitting Live as well. So this is another drawstring bag that it's not as tight, but it stays pretty tight unless you really tug at it. And this one is also what I would call sweater size. Um, I knit my husband's sweater in here. I think it fit in for most of it. Sometimes it spilled out a little bit, but at that point you're really not taking it anywhere anyway. So that's very nice. He's got this nice orange neighbor. And that's all the doctors. Well, not all of them, but up to 11. 12's not on here yet. Neither is the war doctor, but... So that's, and I also have a bag from her same style with sheep on it, which I really like. Um, let's see what else. I've got like so many bags here, I don't know what to do with myself. Another one that I really like is my Harry Potter bag that I got from um, Kicks and Giggles on Etsy. And um, I'm not going to open that bag of worms. But it does come with this nice beaded or bead zipper pull. I have added a row counter on here because it had a little thing. did not come with the bag, so don't assume that came with the bag. It does have a nice handle. It's a very nice wedge size. I have my Gryffindor scarf in here right now, and it just fits. Well, it's my husband's Gryffindor scarf, and it just fits. So... When that is finished, I will be happy to put something else in here, but for now, that's what's living in here. And I really like this. It's a very long bag. It's a long wedge, um, which is perfect for rolling up my scarf and sticking it in. So this would be also good for um, socks or a shawl. So that's another one of my favorites. And let's see, what else do I have over here? Oh, here. I have another Erin Lane bag that I got at Stitches this year. And it's this tiny, tiny little bag. And I showed it because I had my previous box of socks in here. And this is another one of her seriously secure um, bags. And this one has this snap on the back that you can clip it to things. I used it at Gen Con last year, like clipped it to my belt. And I could knit things or carry things in it. Um, be good as a dice bag, but it's, it's very small. It's very fun for like a tiny little project, like my gnome project might go in here next. It's very, it's perfect size for a tiny little project. Uh, or also just holding yarn for a larger project. If you wanted to, you know, put a, a yarn ball in there and kind of close it and then, um, you know, you'd still have that to kind of pull the yarn out, but it keeps the yarn protected in a thing. And you can clip it to things like the inside of your purse or whatever. So I really like that one. It's funny, I have like her smallest bag and her biggest bag, but I really like this one. It's really cute. I used it, to, the first time I had it, I used it to knit a pair of socks. A little pair of footy socks, but... Um, Alright, let's look at this pile of things over here. I have... This one is from the Silver Shed USA. Uh, I just got music on it. We tried to play it. It's not actual music. It, if you look at it, it's all sorts of crazy bars and lines, and they're all in the wrong place. It's got this green pokey dotty fabric on the inside, and I love that it comes with this strap, and it's um, you can unclip it if you wanted to, or you can just use it as a little ball. And this is, what I think, her smaller bag maybe her medium I think this is her medium bag which is perfect for socks for a shawl for anything kind of that size I also have one of her sweater box or sweater bags that I got um, through Leading Moon Fiber Arts giraffes on it which is very large like I feel like I could fit the cat in there um I have not tried to put the cat in there because he would not be happy about it but you know could and I really like this. I, I, I love taking it to choir and knitting projects in choir with it. So I love hers. They are, um, they're very, they're interfaced. So they're very thick. 
very thick. Like there's no way a needle is going to poke through that. And so they also, they stand up very well. And she has a ton of different fabric. She's on Etsy. And, uh, ta-da! Um, what else? Oh, I guess we'll just go off the top of the pile here. Another bag maker that I've gotten some from lately is Fat Squirrel. And this is her small project bag. And it also comes with one of those nifty, um, clippable zipper pulls. But this is her sock. It's got some matching fabric on the inside. I don't think hers are, is, are interfaced. They have some like slight interfacing. But it's just, it, they're very, um, st not stiff fabric, but stiffer fabric. So they do stand up. And they have a nice little pet squirrel tag on them. And they have the little birdies and flowers. And this is another one I have of hers. This is not her sweater size. I think this is her, um, might be her sweater, but not her Erin. Not her Erin. This is a medium one. I don't remember which one this is, but for me, this is a sweater size. Or a very, very large project size. And it does have a nice wide bottom. I've not actually used this. No, I did use it for the mallet covers, but I haven't really used it. Um, and it's made of almost a canvas. I want to say on the outside, which I love the texture of this. Um, and it comes with a bigger swivelly clasp thingy, and it's just got natural on the inside, which I love. It's kind of this natural muslin, which is really nice because it's easy to see in the inside. So if you lose something in there, I mean, you can't really lose anything in there, but it's kind of the big right. And yeah, this one's, it's not interfaced, but it does. Okay, not completely stand up as I knock over everything. So it doesn't stand up as well as her other ones, but it's still pretty stiff. So, Ooh, and then she even got a green flat squirrel thing to match it. So I like that one. Another bag that's one of my favorites is from Homespun House Molly. And I love it because it has a horse on it. And she does interface her bags so they are um, a little thicker. And she's got this nice, it's almost like a corduroy on the inside, which I love. I love, I love textured fabrics. Uh, the outside one is very soft, soft cotton, but hers are also interfaced. And she, they come with a, um, a little, you could use this as a progress keeper. I got the one that says yarn. I know now she, they come with a little house on them which I think is really cute because her her shop is a homespun house, so they have a little house on them, which I think is really cute. So this is one of my shirts. I'm not a pink person, but I like this pink. It's a, it's like a deep pink. I can do this. I can't wear this color, but I like it. And I like the green pop of the zipper against the pink. I love that. So, ta-da! Um... Another one of my favorite bags is this one. And this is made by Little Stain in the Big Wool. You can see that. And she's on Etsy. And this was a custom order from her. And um, this is an option. You can get this, um, what do we call it, clip on the side. And they come with a little ring on the side that you can clip it to. And it's just a nice handle. And um, for hers come with a ribbon on the zipper, which makes them easy to pull, which is nice. And this is her, I think it's kind of her standard large wedge bag. And it has little moon faces in there, which I think are adorable. And so this was from her Over the Moon kit. And I love this thing. It's not interfaced, so it's very floppy. Like, it's not standing up at all. But it is very large. You can put a lot here. When I was designing my my patterns, my hat, my cow patterns, they were in here. And I had my notebook that I would take notes in. I had all the yarn. I had a bunch of other things. I had the project in here with needles. And I still had tons of room. So, and the yellow on the inside is just happy. I like yellow. So, I do have another one of hers, but I didn't bring it out. It's got some stuff in it. It's um, one of her treehouse bags. So, I 
is one of my favorites. Um, and then you saw this last week, but this is one of my new bags from Amelia with the bikes on it. And hers are interfaced, I believe. She doesn't sell her bags. This was one that I did off um, a friendly exchange. So they are quite nice. Nice gusseted bottom. So I'm very excited to use this. She was calling this a shawl size. I would call this like baby sweater size, not maybe adult sweater. Maybe a fingering weight sweater you could put in here. So I'm very excited to use this. I haven't used it yet. I've just been looking at it and petting it. I just love it. So I think that's, ooh, I have one more bag. It's over here hiding. Oh, knock over the tower of bags here. And that is one of my cozy crafting bags. This is one of my newer ones. This is her Where's Waldo. I don't know if she has any. I don't think she has any more, but um, she's got this huge bottom, which is fantastic. It stands up quite well. You can see it's got this large gusset on the bottom, which is fantastic. And very large inside. So I've got um, my stripy Waldo socks in here ready to I have to need to wind this I still have some left over from my husband's stripy socks so I'm going to start with that I think this is what I'm going to take today to cast on um or choir and also have a meeting this afternoon so I'm gonna maybe wind the rest of that yarn before I head to choir and uh so that's what's next on my needles and I love this bag because it is um and she does do interfacing. Yeah, there's definitely interfacing in here. And um, very well made. All of these bags are really well made. I really don't have a bad thing to say about any of these bags. I think that's why I have them. So, uh, I think that's it. Oh, the only one I wanted to show is this is one I've had for a while. And I'm actually um, selling it if anyone wants it. I've been keeping it in a plastic bag to keep it away from the cat. But this is a small sock project bag. It does have a nice gusset bottom and it's got these pockets. It's actually, it's made from flannel, so it's really soft. And it's got these adorable bikes on it. And it's got one of these, it's a well, high pan. You're making your second appearance. It's twice in one episode. What do you think, bud? Huh? He's so annoyed with me right now. Do you want to go down? There you go. He just wants to be up and everything. No, 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 no. 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 So this is, um, it's by Slip Stitch Studio. It's the same one who makes the needle nooks that I have in a lot of my bags. And it's got this nice thick handle. And I just don't use it as much as I would like to. Um, I discovered that I really like the zippered bags, as you can see, because I can't, it's hard for me to fit, like you can fit a sock project in here, but I find I have to fold it a lot and then I worry about like the needles poking out the top or something. So this is, it's just a little too small for my taste, but it would be perfect for a tiny, tiny little thumb. Which is funny because I have this, that tiny little yellow bag, but um, that one seems, seems to work better than this one. I don't know. But I do love the pockets inside. So if you would like this bag, I forget how much I was selling it for. I'll figure it out. It's, it wasn't that much. Maybe like $20, $25 shipped or something. I don't remember. Anyway, so if you're interested in this bag, let me know. Um, it is a lovely bag, and this thing works splendidly for keeping it shut uh, so that's very nice. I have nothing against the bag. It's just, it's not one that I find myself gravitating toward as much. Um, cause sometimes I like to have extra room in the bag just so that I have some to play room in. And with this one, I find like I don't. If you knit a, a lot of tiny little things, this would be perfect. So, sorry if my nose is trippy. So, that one is for sale if you would like it. I'm going to fold it back up and put it in the bag. 
keep it cat hair free. And I have another drawstring bag that I'm sewing, I think. Um, but I can't remember. All right, well, this is another super long episode. Apparently when I do flora and fauna show and tell, they get really long. I hope you enjoyed that episode and that you enjoy seeing many of my project bags. Um, I think I may have like 20, which seems like a reasonable amount um, and in some ways seems like a lot. Um, so I used to not have so many because I'd be like, well, I don't need that many. But then I keep seeing ones that I really, really like, so I keep getting more. But I think I'm probably at a good place now where I don't need to get a ton more. I have enough variety, some for sweaters, some for socks, some for shawls, some for all sorts of things. So that's really what I enjoy is having a variety to choose from. And, you know, that's why, like, some people buy a lot from the same bag maker. Like, I, there are some, I think the most I have from the same bag, bag maker is two. It's kind of my limit. Like, I've got two from the Flat Squirrel, two from Cozy Crafting. Two from Little Skein, two from Yarn Pop, two from Aaron Lane. Yeah, I usually have about two. Um, and they're often different. I think Little Skein and Cozy Crafting are the only ones I have two of the same same style of bag. Um, but I like to have a variety depending on the project, and then I can match my type of project to my bag, um, depending on what I need. So that's my project bags. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, if you want to see more of them, you can look in um, my stash page and see the project bag post. They're not all in there yet, but hopefully soon I will be putting more of them in there. I've been trying to take pictures of them while they're empty, and so some of them still have things in them, so it's been hard to take pictures of them. Sometimes I just take everything out, take like flatten it out, take a picture, put everything back in. Um, some of them are easier than others to do that with, depending on the amount of things that are in the bag. So I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know. Any comments, you can put them here, wherever you're watching them, watching this episode. I think there are places for comments everywhere. So have a great week, everyone, and I will see you soon. Bye.